Oh, goodness. You'll have to excuse the uh, delay in getting this video out. This one and the next one that are coming up on the channel. If you can't tell already, I'm a, a little bit sick because my kids got our entire household sick and it's just been a joy. It's, it's been a joy. So we're going to talk about what I read in the month of March. So the three books that I read, uh, it ended up only being three because I DNF'd Snow Crash. I did not like it. Uh, it's it's very much a a sci-fi weird uh, parody almost of um, cyberpunk like themes and genre and I don't know it was the way it was written I didn't really care <laughs> about anything uh, it it sort of reminded me in a way of Ready Player One just like the con like conceptually very different writing of course. Uh, I just, I wasn't really having fun with it. I didn't like the characters and I, I'm sure this is on purpose and completely intentional, but the, the characters were so stereotypical of like, I don't know. It was just bad. Um, the, the Asian guy named Sushi K that was a rapper, uh, when, when he started rapping in the book is when I said, okay, I'm done. I can't do it. <laughs> this book is not for me. Maybe I'll try it again someday, but I don't know. Maybe Neil Stevenson is just not for me, but who knows? I, I had to DNF that one, so that's over on the shelf, potentially being unhauled at some point. I didn't care for it. Next up, though, a book that I loved, and I started the series because I loved the show so much. Good old Bernie Corndog, Bernard Carnwell, The Last Kingdom, and this book was excellent. So maybe it's bi- I'm just standing in front of it now. Maybe it's bias. Uh, 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 stay. <clears throat> Maybe it's bias because I already enjoyed the show so much, but honestly, they're they're two different mediums, so I expected to like it, and I have a lot of good feelings coming to it from the show. But the book is very w uh, well written. I love his storytelling. I love his character work, and so far, the majority of the characters are very similar to their show counterparts, which is kind of the same experience I had with A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, where after a couple seasons, it takes its own direction. So I expect the books to be wildly different um, while keeping the same general theme of the show, because I've completed the show now and, and loved it. And it only goes up to book 10 of this series. So there's three more books that are being adapted into a movie, but I'm I'm obviously going to read them all because this was fantastic. It's everything that I expected it to be. And I just, I love that because I don't really read a, a ton of historical fiction and it's not as fantastical as some other things are like Poppy War, for example, I wouldn't consider it historical fiction. It definitely pulls a lot of historical moments, but it is straight fantasy and completely spins those into a fantasy world with magic and monsters and all kinds of stuff. Whereas The Last Kingdom yeah, the, the timelines are going to be messed up. Characters are probably going to live and die at different times. And he's going to take his liberties with the historical context that there is. But I, I love that so many of these characters and places and things actually happened and existed. And that's just really cool because basically what I've been doing since reading this and watching the show is just pouring through historical text of what actually happened. And it's just super cool to see it adapted so well and just bringing this sort of like fantasy-ish version of what happened. It's just a lot of fun. Um, as the, the book will tell you, it's it's like Game of Thrones, but real, which is very true. So, I mean, Uhtred is just a ton of fun to follow. You do get a, a little bit of a different perspective in the book because he's an old man and he's retelling his story, right? So it's that, that traditional... Like, here's who I am. Like, let's start back at the beginning and tell you everything that happened. Whereas the show, obviously, you're not going to do it that way uh, because you follow so many different POVs in the show, which I don't know if that's how the books go, potentially. But you, you know, start off with Uhtred as a young boy, but then you're introduced to so many other characters and you're following... it. It's still his story, but it's not like he's necessarily narrating the entire thing. Whereas this, I mean, it's, it's his voice. He's telling you everything that went on, and it's just, it's really well done. I love the dialogue. It's smart and witty. 
I love the the way that battles happen in in this show and book. There's just like a, a reality to it that I really appreciate. And I'm just, I'm loving it. And they're short, which is nice too. Because I mean, there's 13 of them, 14, something like that. But they're not thousand page fantasy books. This was like 300 and, what was it? Oh, it's like 330 pages. So you can read it in a couple of days. It reads easy. It's smooth. I just, I really love it. And I can't wait to continue. All right, next up, as we continue our Song of Ice and Fire, read along with Jimmy and Leanna. A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which was fantastic. And I really was uh, pleasantly surprised, honestly, at how much I enjoyed this because uh, up until now, I had only read A Song of Ice and Fire. I didn't read any other kind of uh, stuff written by George R. R. Martin, especially in this world. And these, it's basically three different short stories that follow Dunk and Egg. It's about a hundred years before a game of thrones starts and it was just a ton of fun it was smart it was well written the characters are lovable dunk and eggs relationship as it grows through these stories is great i love them both individually as characters and when you learn about you know who they are and what role they'll play in the greater world of a song of ice and fire it's just super interesting and intriguing it makes me want to read even more and learn about the the history, honestly, of Westeros. Not, not every one of these was great. I think the third one was my favorite, then the first one, then the second one. The second one was a little bit of a lull, but it was still enjoyable. And it's just, it's nice that you get these stories set in the same world, but it's not as bleak or as dour. You don't have, you know, all these... It, there's stuff happening in the background, but it's not the focus of the story. You're really just following Duncan Egg and their adventures. So you don't have this like battle for the kingdom over the Iron Throne. You don't have all of these people constantly backstabbing each other and doing back in, you know, backdoor deals and all these things that are going on, all the, the political maneuvering stuff, which I love about A Song of Ice and Fire. I love that this is set in that same world, but it's a little bit more peaceful in a way. There's, I mean, there's still some assholes like Targaryens are just pieces of shit. All right, straight up. They're just bad people. And, and they show you that here as well. Not all of them, but most of them. And I don't know, it's just, it was just a joy to read. I was smiling through a lot of it and I didn't expect to speak about it. Spoiler talk as long as we did, because uh, of course we, we live chat for all these books. I was thinking, okay, this book is shorter. It's short stories. We probably don't have that much to say about it. It'll be about an hour, hour and a half. I think we almost talked for three hours again. So adding to our insane... Uh, spoiler discussions, we, we spoke at length about these stories and just the Song of Ice and Fire in general. So check that out. It'll be linked down below. If you've read it and you want some spoiler talk about it, all my thoughts will be there. Okay, so the third book that I actually finished by R.S. Ford was Engines of Empire. Now this is a pretty th chunky boy fantasy book. And it, it's the first of the series... And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this was recommended to me by our friend Elliot Brooks. Thanks, L, for recommending this book. It does a little bit feel like A Song of Ice and Fire. She swore to me that it was like A Song of Ice and Fire meets Final Fantasy. I definitely see the Final Fantasy vibes. They're all just, for me, it's like the, the medieval-ish future sci-fi setting, if that makes any sense. If you play Final Fantasy, you probably know what I'm talking about where it's like there's a tons of like sci-fi elements and futuristic stuff like magic powered mech um being a thing and i know alan talked at length about that it was just you know conceptually very interesting it's definitely a plot driven book um the overarching storyline is really what's driving it it's not so much the character work this is definitely not a first law book where there's not as much plot and it's really heavily focused on the characters and getting you invested in their personal life and story i didn't really get attached to much uh character wise in this book but that's okay it, it kind of depends on what kind of reader you are whether you're going to enjoy it or not i can get down with a good plot there is a lot of um you know political maneuvering uh you know different families vying for power things like that uh different not tribes but like groups i guess kind of going at each other and just the, the entire aesthetic of like, okay, when I heard Final Fantasy, I was like, all right, we need magic, 
we need some kind of forbidden tech, and we need airships. And you got them all here, okay? There's an airship introduced rather quickly into this. I was like, hell yeah, Final Fantasy. And then they have these magic-powered mech or sort of like, not droids, but machines. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll bed Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy VI. I'm just thinking immediately, like, Final Fantasy <laughs> is just being... It's reminding me of Final Fantasy all over the place. So that was great. Um, like I said, not as much game of thrones style stuff but it's there a little bit a little bit it's it's hard to to really compare things to a song of ice and fire one that's so well done honestly um and it's not as like bleak or dour and bloody as, as some of that is but anyway i i really did enjoy this book uh i don't know when sequels are coming out i don't actually know when this book even came out so i got i got to do some research for myself it is definitely worth your time reading uh if you like plot driven books and the characters kind of take a back seat. They're, they're there to sort of serve the plot in a way. Not to say they're entirely forgettable, but I didn't come away with this being like, damn, I really like, you know, these three POVs. It was more so about the story and the plot and the overarching, you know, story elements that are happening as opposed to the characters. But that's okay. It's just a, a different style of fantasy, and that's fine. Um, but those are the three books that I ended up reading. Like I said, I did DNF Snow Crash. Sorry, Nick. I just didn't like it, buddy. But yeah, that, that wraps up my March. My voice is on its way out, so I will try to keep recording here for some other videos, but uh, uh, tune in next time to see what I'm reading in April and already reading because it's already April, so I'm a little bit behind. Sorry, but that's just how it, how it works sometimes.